Good afternoon, happy Thursday, and welcome to the Prep Football Huddle Week 4 edition. Uh, this is Jeff Linder, KJ and Hercules down in the corner, at least in the corner of mine. Got JJ on his couch. Harry got me and my herd of friends uh, from Steel Cow, uh, my dairy buddies. <laughs> So we're, uh, I suppose that's uh, a pretty good, pretty timely with KJ heading northeast uh, for Starmont and uh, East Buchanan tonight. A few dairy farms up that way. So um, did, you ever did you ever consider moving that <laughs> picture? Uh, well, I, I'm in the office now instead of at the kitchen table where I usually am. So, okay. so we're, we're stuck with the. Uh, we're stuck with the barn here behind me. We'll just, so. we'll just steer clear of the background. There you go. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, that's uh, God's, uh, that's God's country up there, you know, guys. So. It is beautiful country up there. So we'll uh, touch on uh, KJ going up to uh, Arlington slash Lamont slash Strawberry Point here in a little bit. But uh, uh, week four, looking back at work, week three, um, more turmoil in class 4a uh you know three of the top four or five teams got beat last week there's another new number one uh north scott and xavier's back up to number two and uh what have we learned in 4a i think we've learned that there's a lot of good teams but uh probably not anybody that's dominant i would agree yeah. um yeah kj you were at you were at that xavier western debut game you know uh tell us a little bit about that two Pretty evenly matched teams. Is that accurate to say? I would say. I I, I would say um, just really uh, impressed with the way Xavier came out after the half. You know, I think Coach uh, Dwayne Schulte kind of mentioned something um, after the game that kind of makes sense a little bit that uh, a lot of these guys have been part of, you know, teams that have gone to the state finals two years in a row and coming off a win. And, you know, not that there's necessarily pressure, but maybe it leads to being tight. And said he thought they were playing not to lose more than playing to win, which, um, you know, is more of a, a mentality than, than anything. And um, they changed it around in the second half. Uh, I was really impressed with uh, Xavier's defense, uh, Grant Glosser, uh, I think still had about 80 yards rushing, but uh, didn't really seem to have that real big breakout run. Um, I think they cut down on the mistakes a little bit. Um, and again, for the second week in a row for Xavier, it came down to a two-point conversion, and this time they were able to convert. I think both times that they uh, went for two points, Colton Beasler Weber scored on rushes, and uh, that says a lot about uh, you guys up front, too. Um, and, and I think Xavier's kind of dealing with some injuries as well. But, yeah, that was one where I thought Western Dubuque was coming in, was kind of going to be the head and shoulders, a better team, but it proved to be pretty even. Um, you know, and they're still going to make some noise, even though they've got a tough matchup with North Scott here uh, uh, this week um, at home. But I, I think when you look at the uh, the field in 4A with North Scott and Xavier and Council Bluffs Lewis Central, and a, even though ADM has an injury, you know, you've got uh, Bondurant Ferrar that looks good after kind of an early uh, uh, loss. Norwalk uh, coming on strong. You know, North Polk has done some good things. Uh you know, you've got a whole cast of teams that, you know, any of them playing in that uh, that final game of the season is not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, KJ, as you mentioned, uh, Brevin Dahl, who's a Iowa University of Iowa recruit, um, has a broken, I think it's arm, um, and he's going to be out for the year for ADM. That's a huge loss running back, um, and they lost. 38-31 Friday night to to Lewis Central. But I was just looking up the statistics here. The kid who came in to replace Brevin Dahl only rushed for 334 yards. <laughs> so they, you know, they must have a pretty good front. Pretty good front. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it 
and that's you know I think that's great. I mean that there's no uh, head and shoulders teams in a class. It makes it fun towards the end of the year, and you know I'd never discount Xavier with that coaching staff and and uh, you know the history and tradition they have. And I wonder if uh, if Dwayne kind of channeled his inner Tom Kapatich at halftime. KJ, what do you think? Well, uh, there, there might have been. I, you know, this is the first time he really ever said he kind of gave him a chewing. So yeah. there definitely was a, a, a channeling of, of Tom Kapadich probably. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, it just pretty much uh, the one of, one of the messages was to play to win. But, you know, I, I think there are a few uh, maybe uh, challenges of fortitude. I guess, uh, I guess, um, at halftime there that, that seemed to work, you know, and, and it really was kind of a different ball game after, uh, after half was Xavier scoring three straight, uh, three straight series. But, uh, the thing with 4A2 guys, you look at this week and, you know, it's, it's going to be another fun week, but it also has, you know, kind of the potential to flip things around, kind of like a Yahtzee cup when you're shaking the dice and see what rolls out. Because you've got number one, North Scott, number five, Western Dubuque. You've got number three, uh, Council of Luffs, Lewis Central, um, and Bondurant Farrar, who's tied for fifth playing each other. And then you've got ADM and, and Norwalk, who are four and seven in our poll. And, um, you know, we could be shuffling some teams around in that uh, that top five to seven um, set of teams. Yeah, and uh, um, so KJ, who, who did you have last week? You had you had Xavier. I had Xavier Western Dubuque. Okay, JJ, where were you? Um, Jefferson uh, smacking down Des Moines North, and well, let's. Uh... Let's have our um, our weekly good vibes fest about Jefferson now. I mean, this is the story just keeps getting better. And uh, the AP poll came out uh, last week. They had Je or this week, I think Monday. They had Jefferson number five. I think that might be a stretch, but uh, you know they're three and zero. I'd put pretty good money that they're going to be four and zero here in a couple days. And uh, then they got Wash, which uh, you know. You know, I'm sure the Jayhawks are going to be jacked up for that one, you know, coming in at four and oh, probably. And, uh, um, you know, what what have we seen from Jefferson through three weeks that makes it pretty makes you pretty confident that they can sustain this? Um, It was it was good to be able to, to see him um, personally, as KJ did the week before. And uh I don't know, KJ, what you what you thought. I I mean, I this is not a, this is a pretty decent ball club. Um, bottom line, I mean, there's uh, you got some kids. I, they have some guys that are playmakers. Uh, I think I, I like the quarterback Jeremiah Pfeiffer. You know, he's he's kind of been through the ringer. Um, you know, last year and and I think the year before he started as a sophomore uh, as well. Um, always seemed to be on the run from from a pass rush, but. You know, he throws a good ball. Uh, Calilero, Ashara Calilero, the running back, is, what, six foot 190, solid, solid runner, runs hard, has some um, has some escapability to him as well. And, you know, defensively, I think they do a pretty good job as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, I was I was impressed. I mean, this is – it's it really is amazing. Um, when you look at this team a year ago, and you compare it to what it is now, uh, you know, the old cliche night and day to me um, from what I've seen. And, you know, there's some really, really good things going on. I mean, it's a good coaching staff and they seem to really have the, the culture is really turned. And I think that's, you know, that's the bottom line. What do you think, KJ? You know, the first thing I think of are intangibles. Those the things that don't show up in the box box score. You know, you, you do have some really good athletes, like you mentioned, uh, Calilero. Pfeiffer does a really good job, I think, kind of managing the yeah. offense. Um, uh, you know, he, he can make the throws. I, I mean, and, you know, they've got some guys on the outside, yep. uh, some receivers. So 
there really is a, a three prong attack there with with those three, and Pfeiffer uh, is doing a good job. They're a lot tougher, I think, up front. Some of that might be a year into the new coach's system. Some of it is all these guys started last year. Remember all the thump thumpings that they got. There maybe it's just the year of maturation for for all of them. Just sure. getting, you know, stronger physically, bigger, um, mentally tougher, maybe more confident, in knowing what they're doing in the system, stuff like that uh, plays a big part. Um, but they're in control, and, and that's that's one thing that they just seem to be a lot more uh, dialed in on what they're doing and how they're supposed to do it. Um, I think the schemes and the game plans are game plans are working better because they have a better grasp of what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it. Um, and, and all of that is coming together, you know, and it's and it's paying dividends on the on the football field on Friday night, especially against teams that, you know, aren't as good. Um, they're able to blow them out. And we've seen that with Marshalltown, uh, Des Moines North. Um, I can't remember who they played. Uh, Muscatine. Muscatine. No, that would be the that, uh, Muscatine was a closer game, but still, um, you know they've scored over what thirty three points all three games so far. I mean that tells you uh, a lot of things are coming together. And the one last thing I'll ask uh, add here too. After that one against Marshalltown, it was really interesting to see how they interacted and how they had fun and they're enjoying themselves together um, after that game. And you mentioned the, the culture, and I know some people, you know, hate that buzz term, but there's something to that. There's something about guys wanting to be there and having fun and, you know, kind of giving an effort because they really don't want to let that guy next to him down. Knowing that all 11 guys have to win their, you know, assignments or their battles each play for them to, to kind of win, uh, you know, on the long run or, you know, on the big picture. And so, I think you okay. see that. So Jefferson's three and all, um, I, I think I, I, I'm fairly certain they're going to win this week at Des Moines East. Uh, this East lost to Des Moines North, which uh, Jeff beat in uh, last week, 41-8. to considerably, eight. too. Yeah. Um, then they got Wash. I, I'd say Jefferson's probably favored against Wash. And they got Davenport Central in week eight. I'd say they're pretty solid favored in that one. So if they would win all those, that gets them to six. Um, the other three teams on their schedule are Iowa City, West, Prairie, and Liberty. Can they compete with those teams? Yes. <laughs> I think, you know, and injuries play a huge part in this, but I've seen West. Um, West has a pretty dynamic offense that uh, probably be pretty hard to, to stop for anybody. But, uh, I mean, you're looking at three teams that have already lost, right? Prairie yeah. and Liberty and, and West. So um Liberty's one and two. Uh West is two and one. Prairie's two and one. Yeah. So um that'll be the big test, obviously. And and obviously the the big test, you gotta win tomorrow night. <laughs> you yeah. know, how do you handle success now at this point, yeah. right? That was one yeah. question. I yeah, how, how long has it been since we've been putting the the card ahead of the hor horse and saying, "Oh, that one's the W for for Jefferson." But I, exactly. you know, that's that's where I am this week. And I love the the crowds getting a little bloodthirsty there in Jayhawk Land too. It was funny that they uh they were way up in the fourth quarter um, last week and scored a late touchdown, and the scoreboard didn't reflect the points right away. And there was somebody down there in the stands scoreboard. Scoreboard at the six points. Come on, scoreboard. We went that extra touchdown. You know, so you know, bloodthirsty. They love this winning stuff. They love the points being racked up. So that's awesome. And it's a great story. I yeah. feel obviously very happy for for all those boys who have been through uh, been through some really really tough times, especially those seniors. 
for you this week. Uh, some there's some big games. Most of them are out in in Central Iowa as always. Uh, Ankeny Centennial is at Southeast Polk. Uh, Waukee Northwest is at Dowling. I think they play that at Valley Stadium. Uh, ben Norse at Linmar. Linmar came back down to earth a little bit. They've been racked with with injuries. Uh, so we'll see if uh, if they can bounce back. Johnson's at Ankeny uh, Valley, which is is Valley on Valley's on three, a very good on three, but still. Uh, they play Waukee this week, so there's some uh, some big games out there. Uh, Prairie's at Pleasant Valley, so uh, just like 4A, there's some uh, there's going to be some shifting this week in 5A. Agree. Yeah, I, I don't know about you guys, but that Prairie Pleasant Valley game, yeah, on this side of the state, um, I, I think that's uh, that's a big one for for both teams. We've seen, you know, Pleasant Valley kind of bounce back. Uh, Kind of big time, big win over uh, uh, Liberty last week. It coming off that uh, uh, hard fought one against Kennedy in week two. Um, you know, Prairie's at, at two and one, and open with a big win against Cedar Falls, beat Dubuque Senior. Um, I, I think that one's going to uh, really maybe kind of prove something for, for either one of those two teams i look at um i was at marion last week uh the new uh marion stadium uh saw the the i wouldn't say the indians i saw the wolves beat uh center pointer band 34 to 19 <laughs> in a game that uh marion which was um kind of offensively challenged the first two weeks uh went out and put up 384 yards of offense in the first half wow. so finished with 512 uh won the game 34 to 19 and you guys got to get out to that new stadium. It's really, really nice. Um, it's it kind of reminds me of a, a mini Lindmar stadium, which, but uh, which I, I kind of prefer it because you're not so darn far away from the field. You're not so high up and you're not uh, half an acre away from, from the field from up there, but uh, it's really a great place. And I think you're both going to like it a lot. I, uh, sure. And I'll be there Friday night. So in a big game against Makoka, which comes in undefeated. So. Yeah. Okay, Jay. So, so Marion has a new stadium now. Obviously, uh, you know a lot different from the old grounds of, of of Thomas Park. But in recent years, we've kind of seen this right from a lot of programs where it's either new field, new stadium. Uh, you know, all the bells and whistles with video boards and, and stuff like that. Where you know Marion, Linmar. Uh, Xavier, I think City High just went through a whole new renovation uh, of Bates Field, right, uh, recently. What does that add to that Friday Night Lights experience, uh, do you guys think? You know, um, how does that just kind of, if it, if it does, um, you know, kind of improve that, uh, that atmosphere that, you know, kind of comes along with Friday night football. Yeah. And, and I think just the fact that they're playing on campus has to help too, instead of taking a bus to, uh, to, uh, to Thomas park. Uh, I, I just, it just has to feel a little bit more like home. I mean, you get to walk to the locker room instead of taking a bus. So I don't know. Um, I, I think it's got to add a little bit more flair to it. Speaking of new stadiums, um, I guess old stadiums too. Uh, Mount Vernon will be playing its final game at First Street Field this week when they host Solon, uh, which uh, is a big deal in itself. When when the Mustangs and Spartans collide, the uh, the pendulum is uh, swung a little bit on that rivalry. Mary, or I'm sorry, Mount Vernon won twice last year against the Spartans. Um, their new uh, their new camp uh, facility will be right behind the uh, the school there on the west side of town and. I imagine that'll be quite the quite the deal too. I'm not going to miss that place. Sorry, I said yeah, it. it's uh, uh it's, it, it's not very a very small area. <laughs> yep, not a very not very press friendly. So I kind of liked it when they played at Cornell a little better, but I hear that uh, that we'll be welcome and we'll have a place to sit at uh, at Mount Vernon <laughs> High School. I don't know what they'll name the new field, but uh, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing what that what it's like there. Do you remember, guys, uh, the old press box, which was on the visitor's side of the field? Yes. Yep. 
It's just maybe not. big enough for uh, uh probably be about as big as my living room, which is not very big. <laughs> um, and it kind of sat at a tilt, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly, Jeff. Yep. Is, I have that right. Yep, I covered a playoff game there a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back in the day, it was like it wasn't. There was no use even going up there because there was no room, and it kind of looked you looking at an angle. You're always turning your head. Uh, <laughs> And the other side of the field, part most of the seating was, I think, a gra the grass bank there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the Mount Vernon side, that's where the coaches would set up. Yeah, with uh, on uh, really? you know on top of that hill, uh, you know, closest to the school. So it's just, it really is. You kind of look at it; it's a regulation football field, but there's like no room around around the football field at all. And there never was. <laughs> it, it'd be like when they play football games at Wrigley there's just yeah it's it's tight but it's it's quaint and when yeah, when you get much. to october and the leaves start to fall on the field it's yep. it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. yeah 100 percent, and yeah. uh, no parking or anything but yeah uh good for mount vernon i, I mean I, I i suppose there's nothing more apropos than playing the last game at uh first street stadium there against uh you know your biggest rival right yeah so pretty yeah. Um, just some other big games this week in three A. Williamsburg is at Fort Madison. I think I think Fort Madison are they three and zero? Yes. Yeah, they're three and zero. I I I still think it's going to be a little bit of a mismatch. I think Williamsburg rolls in that one. Uh, Creston's at Carroll. Assumptions at Dubuque Wallard in a game that might be pretty competitive. Nevada is at Hampton Dumont Cal. Uh, Webster City is at West Delaware. Just uh, kind of name some. Some good games coming up this week in 3A. Uh, 2A, uh, just looking here, Van Meters at Clorinda. Uh, Central Lion, George Little Rocks at Sheldon. Uh, Western Christians at Cherokee. Uh, you know, that that uh, Western Iowa is kind of a, a hot spot in 2A football with, uh, with Central Lion, George Little Rock, Western Christian, West Lion, and Cherokee. There's some, some pretty uh, pretty good teams there. And Always, right? <laughs> Correct me if I correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the the start of district play for two A and one A? I think it is from two A on down. A uh, A and eight player have begun. I think they're a couple weeks into it now. But uh, yeah, I think one A two A yeah one A two A three one A two A start this week, and I think three A and four A start next week. Correct. Okay. And so. I, I'm not sure. I might have missed it if you mentioned it, but. Uh, uh, number five Monticello is at Anamosa. Both are two yeah. and one, and, and is, they still play for the cowbell. I think they do. I okay. think they do. Um, yeah, Monticello's bounced back really nicely from uh, you know from losing its first uh, first week game against Mount Vernon, and they're uh, starting to get it rolling again. So, hey, before we leave two A, um, just wanted to throw out there. I think is is Tipton two A. I think Tipton's two A, but wherever they are, they're three and zero. Yeah. And I think that was a pro, one of those programs that uh, I did. They go zero nine or one eight last year, and uh, uh, they've been dominant. I mean, they they've beaten three teams that are zero and three, but you know, fifty four nothing over L and M, nineteen eight over Vinton, thirty five seven last week over Mount Pleasant. They got West Liberty this week, then Comanche, then Anamosa, and then they is there a chance that uh, Tipton could be six and zero going into their last two games against Northeast and Monticello? Yeah, and, well, there's yeah. I, I was just gonna say. I mean, they and they've beaten what Vinton is Vinton Schellsberg a four A or a three A guy? Maybe three A. Okay, and Mount Pleasant as well. Three A. Okay, so I mean they've beaten bigger schools. So yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, you, you you beat West Liberty this week. You know, I think Comanche is a decent ball club the following week. So, um, yeah, good for the good for the Tigers. I mean, it's good when when programs that have maybe uh, struggled a little bit, you know, are getting after it. So, yeah, uh, hey, uh, I, I was wrong. The... I think Vinton Shellsburg actually is two A in football. They are. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Decreased that much enrollment. Wow, that's yeah crazy. Uh, one A. How about that? Hey, no, go ahead. Move, how about that area in uh, along Highway Thirty? Uh, Lisbon's three and zero. Mount Verdon's three and zero. Solon's two and one. 
Uh, you mentioned Tipton's 3 0. Um, uh, North Cedar 1 and 2. North Cedar's 1 and 2. 1 and 2. So, but when you look at that little area, like from uh, Mount Vernon to Mechanicsville, you've got uh, uh, teams that are pretty much what, 11 and 1. Yeah. Um, hey, if you, if you want to go a little bit further east on Highway 30, Cal, Cal Wheat won its first game in, in school, varsity game in school history last week. Really? Nice. Wow. Very Good nice. Yeah. And Tipton so, was 0 9. I just I just double checked that, Jeff. Okay. 0 9 last year. So, yeah. So they're kind of pulling a mini Jefferson right now. Exactly. Or Jefferson's pulling a mini Tipton, one or the other. So. <laughs> Uh, 1A, some big games this week. Uh, let's see. MFLs at AP. That should be a pretty good game. Underwood at uh, AHSTW. Uh, Sumner Fredericksburg plays Dyke. Uh, that's probably the good ones among the top 10 teams. Uh, might as well mention, I mean, I don't think it's going to be a competitive game, but Regina is 3-0 and and they host Durant. Any thoughts on 1A? Um, Regina's having a nice... Bounce back season, obviously. Um, uh, it seems to really have it going. I mean, that, the win over Minneapolis, forty-five to seven, was pretty impressive last week, right, yeah. guys? So yeah, they're uh, throwing the ball really well. Yeah, and I, you know, you had to figure it was a matter of time, right, <laughs> with that program that yeah. they would they would, would kind of find the way. Uh, yeah, and it's not like they were bad last year; they were five and four. So right, right. exactly. Uh, 900 yards passing for the Regals through three games. So there, that goes to your point, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I thought, I thought Meepo, I thought Meepo coming into this season would be a, a really good uh, team, and thought last week might be a challenge. But when you mentioned, you know, some of the stats, Gentry Dumont threw for almost 400 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, Jackson uh, Nave. Uh, caught six passes for 162 yards and a touchdown. Um, they're a pretty good duo there, and um, you know, kind of uh, showing shades of uh, Ashton Cook and uh, Alex Wick um, here early on. Yeah. And I say that a little hyperbole there, um, yeah. you know, given what uh, Cook and Wick have done, but right now. Uh, those two seem to be connecting on a really high, high level. Yeah. Uh, Class A, I think uh, maybe the big game of the week might be Madrid at Linville Sully. I think that's going to be a, a really good game. Uh, St. Asgard hosts Belmont Clemmy. I don't think they're going to be pushed too hard. But let's talk a little bit, KJ. Uh, you, you've got a oh. Thursday night uh, game up at uh, up at Arlington with uh, between Eastern Cannon and Starmont. I think uh, that'll be another uh, – Another run-oriented game. Yeah, and uh, you know both are are two and one. Kind of uh, one of those benefits of, of having uh, um, games kind of spread out um, because of officials or what have you. Um, you know, this may not be one we get to otherwise. But uh, East Buck coming off a big win last week. Uh, where they beat Makoka the Valley 39-21. And you mentioned the rush game. That kind of – East Buck is synonymous to that. And last week they showed why. Um, they rushed for almost 350 yards. Uh, Tanner Thurn, um, you know, the, the fullback linebacker for them, uh, he rushed for 195 yards and four TDs. Um You know, so I'm guessing that you're going to get a lot of that. You know, they're – probably running behind, uh, you know, Iowa commit Cody Fox. Um, you know, uh, their defense had 11 tackles for loss against um, Mac Valley. So they're doing it on both sides of the ball. Uh, you know, Mac Valley, um, they've got some talented uh, offensive players, obviously with Flance McShane and, and others. So that that's a pretty good uh, feat for them. And, you know, we've talked about uh, – kind of resurrected programs a little bit in this podcast with Jefferson um, tipped in, but what about Starmont? Starmont's two and one right now. And it wasn't that long ago that, you know, they were in turmoil as far as numbers and 
being able to finish a season and and here they are having success uh kind of out of the gate and two and one um hosting east buck so um kind of a uh got to add Starmont to that that group of programs that have kind of uh reemerged i guess yeah i uh I'll put a good word in for them just because I had a bunch of relatives, cousins that played up there in that program. So, um, yeah, uh, last week lost to North Lynn, which we all know is a good football team, and 27 to nothing, which is representative at least. Uh, North Lynn scored a touchdown in each quarter, so it wasn't like, um, you know, it was a blowout, I guess. But fall task for the Stars tonight against, uh, yeah. against uh, a really, really good East Buchanan team. Yeah. Uh, moving to class A, uh, excuse me, A player. Um, not a lot of really good games. Uh, Winfield Mount Unions at Montezuma. That might be might be competitive. Montezuma can certainly score. Uh, Winfield's really good on both sides of the ball. Um, Lansing Key, three and zero. They uh, they host Don Bosco tomorrow. That uh, that could be a pretty good game. Um, I'd say those are probably the best uh, best games out there of teams that are. Uh, an eight player. I see uh, East unions at Bedford that might be competitive. So, um, uh, do you guys, you guys know the, about? do you guys, do you guys know the circumstances behind the forfeit, um, with new London and central city by any chance? What happened there? Central city forfeit that game. I believe new, new London forfeited. So they, went Oh, ahead of time. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. Because that's been a, a really good program here in recent years. They've had some great athletes. Yeah. They won a state championship a few years ago, didn't they? Uh, boy, I know they were in the final four. I think they at least got to the finals and maybe won the whole thing one year. Okay. Um, I guess I don't know. Good effort that. I need yeah. to I will, I need effort I will look that. it up right now as you guys. Uh... Yeah, I, I think they might have. I know they – at the very least got to the dome. I think they won a title within the last five years. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, they're on three and they're struggling. They, you know, maybe they've uh, maybe they're in a numbers crunch right now. Um, looking at the roster online, Lindy, they've got 20 some players. Um, okay. And that would be obviously freshman through senior. Only one, uh, let's see, only two, only three seniors on the roster. So, mm -hmm. and it looks like, uh, oh, wow. And two juniors and the rest are freshmen and sophomores. So, yeah. Tough. That's tough. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's not a team that you want to go play Central City with right now. Yeah. And, you know, maybe there was some sickness there or something. Um, maybe they, you know, just, uh, you know, just saw the inevitable and <laughs> didn't think it was wise for their younger kids to be thrown into that situation. So, yeah, uh, I'm going yeah, I'm just to curious if they want a, a title or not. OK, uh, just uh, to confirm what you said, when they won the eight player title in 2018, OK, 12 and, 12 and one overall um, and, uh, and won it in 2018. So you're you're correct. All right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we sign off? I'm going to uh, throw a pimp or uh, pimp my story here. Um, on uh, I, I did something on Tate Wood, which will go into tomorrow's paper, which is probably the most appropriately named linebacker you'll ever meet, right? With that name, Tate Wood, he should be a <laughs> linebacker. He's a junior from Independence, boys, and uh, two weeks ago. Uh, in their game against Crestwood, he had 22 tackles, all of them solo. Wow. And then last week, just to top himself, he had 23 tackles in a loss to walk on, which I guess tied the school record. And uh, they're legit. From what I was told, Justin Putz, the, co uh, the coach there, said that uh, their stat guy, who KJ might know because he does a lot of work with independence wrestling, um, Matt uh Matt Shannon, do you know him, KJ? Oh yeah. Yep. He is he is probably one of the uh he probably does one of the best jobs for any program or any school because he does it's not just wrestling. 
football, he'll have uh he'll have binders this thick, yep. you know, and, and have them broken down by decades. He's chronicled independence football and wrestling going back to the early, I think early 1900s maybe, or uh, it, it's, it's crazy the work he's done to have a time capsule of both of those programs. And uh, he does a great job uh, helping us with our coverage um, on Friday nights mm-hmm. and, and gets us notes and everything. Um, he, he's a tremendous asset. And if he's the one that's doing the stats, I, I would, uh, I would guess that every single one of those uh, are credible and, and accurate. Yeah. And that's what coach said. He goes, uh, you know, when Matt gave him the, the, his totals for tackles, you, uh, you know, coach was like, he really had this many tackles and, you know, Shannon kind of shook his head and he goes, well, it must be legit. So I turned on the tape and he was right on <laughs> 22 tackles and 23 tackles were, were legit. So uh, that's doing some work, boys. I don't care who you are um, to have that many tackles, 45 tackles, in two games is, is crazy. And they face a, a decor team that runs the football a lot Friday night. So uh, you know, is, uh, is he a middle linebacker? Middle linebacker. They they run a four four and and he's one of their middle linebackers. Also gotcha. plays a little offensive line. So, uh, and, and also and I'll I just say, I'll say this about that really quick. Yeah. Even as a linebacker, even if they scheme up front or run stunts that put you in place to make a tackle, and, and that's your, you know, everything Area. is kind of built for you to be the guy to make stops it's a whole nother thing to do that and to do it 22 and 23 times. So even if it's set up for you to be in position to make plays, you still have to make the tackle and make that stop against somebody that could either run you over or cut back or, you know, get get past somebody. So that's, that's pretty darn impressive. Yeah. And new London did have, uh, it was a forfeit because of injury. They had 15 players. Three got hurt the week before, so they're down to like 12 players, and the majority of them were freshmen and sophomores. So they do okay. plan to play Friday night against HLB. So okay. there you go. Cleared Sounds that good. Up. Okay. All right. Who's going where on Friday? I will be at Kingston for uh, the Kennedy Wash uh, contest. Um, right now, uh, is it Kennedy's one and two. Uh Washington's 0-3, um, but I think you really have to consider Kennedy a heavy favorite there, obviously. JJ? I'm going to uh, uh, watch my niece, Natalie. Hi, Natalie. If You never watch this, so I don't even know why I just said that. But she <laughs> she's a flag, way, uh, flag in the flag group at Marion, um, okay. and they are uh, playing Makoka to Friday night, so. All right. I get to uh, I get to check out the new stadium. Okay, take uh take an appetite with you. They they'll have sandwiches, pizza, cookies, yeah. and s- some other yummies up there. So, popcorn. I think you're on your own for popcorn. Oh my god! So, um, I will be at Bates Field Friday for the Battle of the Boot. Uh, Iowa City West at City High, and at halftime we will be handing off. Athlete of the Year paraphernalia to Mr. Ben Keeter and to the folks at City High. Very nice. Will uh, Will Ben be there, or will it just be uh, the yeah? Admin? I, I think he's going to be there. I think oh, that's wow. the plan. So yeah. Wow. So since, since we good. since we talked uh, we talked beforehand that you know he's uh, he's right in the mix uh, of trying to do double sports with uh, yeah. Hawkeye football and, and wrestling. That uh, the fact he's able to get away is is pretty fortunate and and nice. Yep, that's a good deal. So, any parting words? Just make sure to check out uh, all our content at thegazette.com. Uh, all of the the game capsules and rankings, and uh, you know who our ranked teams face uh, are posted. Uh, Jeff, you did, uh, Linder, you did a great job with that. Uh, JJ's working on, uh, uh, the, the Tate Woods feature, Tate Wood. 
from Independence. So make sure you check out the app, gazette.com, and our four downs segment um, where we kind of tackle a few questions. Um, that's all there for, for you to consume if you're watching this. Might as well, you know, take in the, the rest of the content that we have for, for prep football. And KJ, right. KJ, KJ's report on uh, East Buchanan Stormont sometime. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Absolutely. So, all right. Long. Well, for Nathan Ford, KJ and Hercules, you got JJ and the, these yeah. knuckleheads behind me, uh, the cows and me, and uh, we'll call it a day. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And uh, follow us tomorrow. <laughs>